harshness is transformed into beauty and then terror by Godland, the film from Icelandic director Hilnil Palmason about a 19th century Danish pastor sent to establish a new church on Iceland's remote southeastern coast. I left the cinema dazed and elated by its artistry, breathtaking in its epic scale, magnificent in its comprehension of landscape, piercingly uncomfortable in its human intimacy and severity. There's such superb compositional sense in its still life tableau shots, creating an almost archeological sense of time and something deeply mysterious and unbearably sad. There are echoes of Werner Herzog's Aguirroth of God, Roland Joffe's The Mission, Lisandro Alonso's Jauja, and even perhaps Red River by Howard Hawks. De har fundet en deroppe, som kan føre jer sikkert frem. Og de siger, at folk derfra, de har flere hundrede års erfaring med vejret, floderne og glitscherne. Øen er helt anderledes end Danmark. Folk der, vejret, vinter, er helt forskellige. Mange flytter fra Østkysten på grund af vulkanen, der er gået i udbrud. Ja, I passerer jo nok ikke lige forbi vulkanen. Det kan godt blive svært at aflæse floderne, som kan stige mere end normalt. Folk siger, at vulkanen den udsender en stank. Som om, at jorden har skidt i bukserne. Palmason announces in the opening credits that the story was inspired by the supposed discovery in Iceland of seven glass plate photographs of people and places taken there at the end of the 19th century. Now, in fact, the claim is a deadpan fiction. Though his screen has an almost square 133 to 1 aspect ratio, perhaps in honour of the still photograph motif. Elliot Crossett Hove plays Lucas, a highly strung young clergyman instructed by his bishop to travel to a Danish pioneer community in Iceland, then a Danish dependency, superintend the church building and install himself as parish priest. Lucas makes his arduous journey first by sea and then overland with horses, taking among his luggage a huge and burdensome cross, climbing mountains and fording rivers with it. But Lucas has a secular ethnographic project to go with the imperial Christian mission. He dreams of taking the first pictures there, capturing the people with the new technology. His cumbersome camera tripod goes on his back, its three spiked feet poking up behind his head, a version of the points of the crucifix. The camera is Lucas's ordeal as he visits his Stations of the Cross. Driven to the edge of madness by hardship and physical pain, Lucas has a thwarted friendship, or something more, with his translator, and is finally to find an erotic connection with Anna, played by Vic Carmen Stone, the daughter of a local parishioner who takes him in. But his life is basically to be dominated by his cantankerous, contemptuous Icelandic guide Ragnar, a tough, weather-beaten veteran, tremendously played by Ingvar Sørgudsson. Palmason shows us that Lucas is humanized and possibly even redeemed by his new life at his journey's end. His relationship with his quasi-host, the level-headed widower Carl, a shrewdly judged performance from Jakob Lohmann, who is bemused by Lucas's self-harming decision to come to Iceland in the most difficult way possible, and then suspicious of his potential designs on his eldest daughter. Here, Anna's younger sister, Ida, played by Ida Mekin Hilnstotir, has an attractively emollient role. Her relationship with Lucas is gentle and sweet and brings out the nearest Lucas has to warmth. But the mightiest figure is the implacable Ragnar. So far from helping Lucas across the terrain, he basically embodies the terrain. He is the very personification of its hostility. As an Icelander, he hates the high-handed Dane with his book learning, and Lucas comes in turn to hate and fear him. And yet Palmerson shows that Ragnar softens imperceptibly with Lucas, even as he sabotages him. He needs someone to confess his fear of God while he is taking a lifetime's buried rage out on the traumatised priest.
In Godland, these emotions are projected out onto the stunning, daunting landscape to the accompaniment of some spine-meltingly beautiful choral music, and the austere, boxy screen itself looks like a window onto a vast, unfathomable world. That's it. Please give this humble vlog a like and a share and subscribe to this channel, leaving a comment on whatever takes your fancy about what's on at the movies. And do please go and see a movie at a cinema. Please buy my book, incidentally, The Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian. See you next week.